Hello everyone, it's Helen here from Simply Made Crafts and today we are going to be doing some Christmas crafting. I can see there's some people already arrived so let's do a quick sound test. Can you hear me? Um, hi Gemma. Hi Benita, it's great to see you. Um, I hope you guys are all fine and I can see people coming in already so um, I better not play with these because I might snap them. Oh, I've got a little snap already. I'm going to swap that out for another one. We're going to be playing with some candy canes today. And uh, this one looks all right. I need a straight one. It has to be straight for the project that we're doing today. That one looks good. Anyway, this is broken. I can eat that one. That's how the rules work. Okay, so how is everyone? I hope you're all feeling really nice and Christmassy. Um, yep, hopefully. Can someone let me know um, if you can hear me? And then we can jump straight in. So hi, Carol. Hi, Nova. Hi, Sarah Louise. Hope you're all feeling Christmassy. We're getting there, we're getting really close now. Okay, so we have 60% off uh, Simply Made Crafts at the moment. Uh, that ends midnight tonight, or 11.59 to be exact. Um, there's pretty much everything that's uh, SMC that's included in there, apart from my latest release. So if, you, if there's anything that you've had your eyes on, then definitely pop that into your basket. Now is definitely the time with 60% off. It's a really good offer. I'm just going to pop these lights on. This is the uh, the latest make that I have. So I've challenged myself uh, for the next month or so to give a makeover to some of my um, <clears throat> SMC die sets. Um, I'm just going to give them all a Christmas makeover. So I would love to know um, your suggestions. Um, oh, good. Nova's saying she can hear me just fine. It might get a bit louder if I stand up because I'll be closer to the microphone then. So you might have to turn your volume down, but I'll try not to shout. Um, but yes, I'm in the middle of a challenge of redoing a lot of my older sets. So this is a Halloween set. This is the Haunted House and I'm giving it a Christmas makeover. So if there's anything that you would like me to do a makeover on, the only rule is it has to be in stock, otherwise that's just teasing. So um, anything that's in stock currently and you want to see a Christmas makeover, let me know in the comments and I'll also be asking on social media. So I think we have a rough, a good amount of people in here now, so I'm gonna dive straight in. So I have lots of things set out here, so let's clear the decks. And then we're going to be making Christmas crackers, but we'll be using these straws later. Hang around for the end because we're going to be making a Christmas pavilion with the witch's hat. I know Benita loves the witch's hat, so we're going to, have got to do a project just for Benita here. It's going to be a Christmas pavilion, and uh, the second project is going to involve the candy canes. Let's pop those over there, and we'll be using some chocolate coins for that let's move this haunted house I'm going to see if I can work around this tree without knocking it over okay we're going to be starting off with these these are the bat wing crackers I love these some of you may already have these already so we're going to be making some Christmas versions of these today with the holly jolly digital downloadable papers so I've got two here already and all we had to do really was to snip off the wings so really this is an all-round cracker good cracker and it's going to look perfect um, as a table favour pop them on a stack of plates you've got your nice foliage and your Christmas scene out even for birthdays or Easter it's going to be perfect for that I keep worrying I'm going to knock that tree over <laughs> I'm not used to working with um, Christmas trees and everything in the way so we'll we'll see how we go so let's jump straight into the first one I've got everything laid out behind me so I've got a choice of two ribbons and I'll be using the holly jolly downloadable papers those are also in the sale I think they're 3 dollars so um, that's a nice discount on there and this is the bat cracker here now you will be needing a large format machine for this there we go it cuts it all out in one so it's super easy and you can make these up in advance so that's 60% off and then this also has the 60% off this is the Christmas words die set you get this tag as well as uh, four sentiments and the shadow dies for behind as well so here we are those two that's what they look like again different colorways absolutely perfect 
So if you do want to join the Paper Crafting with Helen Griffin um, Facebook group, you can find that on the Facebook. I haven't linked it, but I will after the video. Um, and a lot of you have been sharing your bits and bobs and I love seeing all of your makes so it's super exciting so before I get this uh, die cut I'm going to quickly go through the comments and then we shall die cut okay hi Karen yep Gemma can hear me hi Mandy and I also want to say hello to Lynn Clifton. I'm not sure if she's watching. I'm sure she is. I've not spoken to her in a while, so I hope you're okay, Lynn. If you fancy sending me a message for a quick chat, you can do. I'd love to catch up, see what's going on, see what latest fun and games you're up to. Okay, so I'm gonna run that through. This needs an A4 machine. So let's put that through. Hopefully it won't be too noisy. It's away from my microphone, so should be good. Yes, uh, someone put in um, my Facebook group today a whole ton of different witch hat Christmas projects. So many things that you can do with this Christmas hat, it's unbelievable. Okay, here is a die cut. Again, make all these up in advance and store them flat, you can't go wrong. I do go quiet every now and then. That's just how I work. Right, so we want to have some nice relaxing crafting today. You don't want yak, yak, yak. Well, some people like that, but I like to go quiet every now and then. Yes, I was one of those children that you had to worry about when it went quiet. So definitely that is how I work. So we're going to fold all of these score lines down. So I've left the paper the white paper that I have printed this onto. It's really good quality cardstock. It's 250 GSM that is linked. So everything that I've, I'm using today is linked there in the description box. So again, this has done all of the score lines. So you just got to get in there with your bone folder. Otherwise you will have rounded corners, rounded folds, and that's never a good look. So really press that down. And that will give you some really nice sharp turns there. And then we just fold the other way. Again, this will work great with any papers that you have in your stash as well. And it is sort of tempting to kind of cut this sort of like a bonbon as well. I'm sure you can get creative with reshaping those wings if you don't want to cut them off completely. So has anyone started their Christmas craft crafting yet? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys are making. Okay, so this um, Christmas cracker we're making holds a good amount of goodies, probably about two or three medium sized sweets and Obviously, the larger your box, the more sweets you have to pop in or chocolates you have to pop in. And the smaller it is, the less you have to pop in. But, but don't be stingy. Make sure it's a good size for whoever you're giving it to. Um, I think this will only fit one Ferrero Rocher. I need to try this with the Ferrero Rocher, but I think it only fits the, just the one. And then we're going to snip the wings off. This is the most time consuming part is folding these score lines. And I've used lovely pink tartan papers from the Holly Jolly collection. Okay, scissor time. Right, let's snip these wings. So we're just going to, yeah, I'm using a long bladed scissors here because you get a really nice straight line when they're long bladed. Lots of little snips, you have the chance to go wonky. Okay, glue time. Okay, I've been trialing this now for over a month and I I do actually quite like this. The bottle just really helps holding this. It's a good shape, good round bottle, I like it. 
and as long as you don't put too much on there as with any liquid glue it dries really fast as well so it's going to be perfect for your 3d makes just drawing this together super easy now this is the point where you would tie your one of the ends and pop your sweeties in okay so i've got a choice here of two ribbons from my stash there we go that's a really good size i like that i have this pink organza ribbon or i have this lovely green ribbon i think the green will actually look quite nice but to make a different one i'm just going to go with the the organza So it's up to you whether you want to tie a bow or a little knot, depends, um, usually these get pulled apart anyway so it, it doesn't really matter so I'm just going to tie a knot and there is a way that you can have your knot look like a little bow anyway so we tie it in a double knot and then trim it. You can fold it in half and cut to create a little like a tail or you can go diagonally and that kind of looks like a pretty bow. And then we'll pop some sweets in there and then do the other bow. Again, can you imagine just getting these ready? It's really stress-free if you were just uh, doing this the day before. Tie our last little knot. There we go. Oops, I injured this one. I took the point off. Let's redo that. There we go. Right. That is good, just like that as it is. But we're going to jazz it up a little bit more you can decorate it with any sort of embellishment that you have you can add a sentiment and I've got uh, this uh, Noel here from takes me a while to reach behind me um, the Christmas words die set which is this just here and I love the little tag that you get with it as well it's going to be perfect for all of your types of your gift giving so we're just going to pop that on so let me just grab a little bit of um, a foam pad thank you Kathy and I'm going to pop that on there I've had loads of messages actually saying people have got loads of bargains in the SMC sale so let me know what you have bought already I'd love to know what you've had your eye on for ages and that when it went on sale you popped it in your basket I would love to know what you guys have got okay so there is our Christmas cracker made from the bats so that's the bat version and here are the Christmas versions there we go super duper easy stress-free hardest decision there is making uh, what while well, choosing what papers to choose really that's the hardest thing let's pop these aside and then we are going to move on to our next project I will probably run out of space today okay this one um, I forgot to say at the beginning there is something here for everyone so I'll be using die sets and also doing projects on the scoreboard so this is a scoreboard project and I'm going to be decorating it with the medium poncettia die set and the papers are more downloadables that are also in the 60% uh, off uh, sale though it's not fully 60% off it's uh, I think it's a pound off the digital papers so um, these ones are the traditional Christmas and these are the Ponsettias, they're really nice size. If you ever uh, remember, I think it was 2019 I think, I had these huge Ponsettias and uh, Sam made this 
beautiful basket from them and uh, these are the smaller versions so you get these lovely fur sprigs as well and this center there for the poncetia which i do actually need to cut out so uh, we'll do that as a last finishing touch okay so i've got everything ready to go so i do have a cutting and scoring guide that will be right at the bottom of the description box on this video so you'll be able to find that and i've already made the large box here and the plan is we're going to be making a sleigh using candy canes so you can use edible candy canes like these or you can buy the plastic ones like the decoration ones so all you have to do is measure your box um, or create your box to be a good size for your um, your candy canes so some candy canes have shorter hooks or they're, they're different um, lengths some of them are even longer than this so my space was round about two and a half inches that's how I got the space for my bottom box and the dimensions for this one is down below and the dimensions for the one I'm about to make is also down below under large and small so for the small box you need to cut your card to four by four and then we are going to cut this one down to, we're going to be working to this 16th of an inch. If you don't know um, how to get the 16th of an inch, it's the, it's the middle point between these eighths. So the 16th will be in between these eighths. So if you just count up in twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, that will be 16 within that inch. Okay, so we're going to be using uh, two, is it two, let's double check before I start cutting, yes, two and fifteen sixteenths, which is literally just a notch off the three inch mark. So it's basically just the three inches, just a little bit taken off. Actually, no, we're going the other way. Sorry, I did that wrong. I will correct those measurements as soon as I'm off. It's three inches on one sixteenth. Luckily, I caught myself. So it's three inches and one sixteenth, and I will update that description. Right, let's get scoring, and then we'll find out whether I got my measurements right. Okay, so for the base, we're going to score at one inch on all four sides. Ah, oh, thank you, Therese. So Gemma's saying she's got this set this morning. Was that the Ponsettias, Gemma? Thank you, Busy Bunny. She loves the cute crackers. Okay, that's now folded. And now for this one, we are going to score at half an inch on all four sides. Okay, time for some snipping. Grab yourself some little ones. And then we're just going to snip up that section and then we want the score line to still be attached to whichever bit we're trimming off. So go around all of these tabs. Hi Sam. I'm looking forward to your live at two. I'll have a good hour to watch before their children come home from school. So no more school runs for me. I don't have to quickly dash out anymore. I just wait for them to come home. Okay, we're gonna do the same up this one. So the score line is on that little snippet that I've trimmed off.
and one more. Again, you can use these little boxes just as little treat boxes. You don't have to add them, make a sleigh or anything. These can be perfect as a little miniature stacked pair of boxes. So, ah, Charmaine's watching from Malta. I wonder what the weather's like there. Today here in the south of England it is cloudy with a hint of sunshine every now and then. Right, so I've just added my glue all the way up to that score line there. Okay, there is our base done, and as you can see, this book binding glue is absolutely great for 3D projects. Just keep an eye on the comments there. I'm waiting to see what Shemaine says about the, the weather in Malta. Okay, more glue. Okay, and then the moment of truth does this fit onto our base? That is the hair raising question. Yes, it does. There we go. We have our two boxes now. I'm going to leave that glue out because we're going to be working on the poncettias next. Look at that. These are going to be stacked. A little dry run here, and then we're going to add those to the sleigh. Put some poncettias on at the top. So I'm thinking these larger ones here, they might be a bit too big. I'm not sure actually. And then we have the smaller ones. So do your dry runs first. I think I prefer the smaller ones. I'm going to save the larger ones for a different project, but always cut a green one to pop at the back of your project, of your, sorry, your poncettia. There we go. Because the actual flower part isn't any of this. The flower part is the centerpiece which is here, this, that's where all the pollen comes from. So these aren't actually petals, they are leaves. And during the summer, they actually turn green. And then you need to do special treatment in October of 12 hours daylight, 12 hours darkness in order to get them to go red again. So um, that's hard work. So whenever I have my poncettias left over from Christmas, um, I don't tend to do that 12 hours each side. I'm just going to use a bone folder here and I'm just going to curl these upwards. You can also scrumple them up to make some distressed shabby chic sort of poncettias. So I still have my poncettia from last year. It's doing really nicely. I kept it alive the whole summer. Um, if you want to keep your poncettia alive, then don't worry if all of the leaves fall off. Just water it uh, when the soil, dr soil dries out. Don't panic, just leave it. And then where the leaves fell off, on the little nodules there, you will see tiny, tiny little leaves regrowing. So just leave that, it will come back into full leaf again within a month or two. Okay, so let's get these stacked together. So I'm just going to add a bit of glue here. It might twist and turn here for a little bit because this is mirror cardstock, so it might want to twist and turn on us. But as you can see, it has the green at the back and then the, the red. And then I'm going to do the little ones too. Oh, I need to curl that one. Bit of glue. Again, stagger the leaves so that the, uh, they go in all of the little gaps. Okay, 
that I Benita, I also have lots of faux plants as well. It just helps me keep all the, the live ones alive. I've got to have some faux ones too. Otherwise, yeah, if I have too many, it's too many plates spinning. So, yeah, I mostly just have poncettias and orchids. Those are my plants. And they're super easy to look after. Even though most people find them challenging, you just don't have to treat them like um, a, a house plant, basically. You just literally have to just water them when they need it. And don't overwater them. That's it. And put them in a, um, a place where they like to live. So my Poncetia doesn't like to get cold or drafty. It needs natural daylight, but not too much. And my orchids, they need like a northerly, westerly sort of, not, not too sunny, but my north window sills they love. So they're all on my north window sills. Just grabbing some gold here. I'm going to run that through my big shot. I just need to make the centre for this. Poncetia. Ah, yes, cats are a hazard, aren't they? They definitely chew on stuff. Let's pop that out. You can do a nice, nice little bunch of those all on the same stem. Okay, I'm just going to fold these up. Just very gently curve these up. Add a little bit of glue in the centre. I probably won't end up adding ribbon to this because I'm going to have the poncettia on the top but if you want to keep your lids and everything in place then we're going to just glue everything together how pretty how pretty is that that's so festive I love that that's going to sit on the top there with the fur sprigs quick dry run again that's what it's going to look like and then we're going to add those on next Okay, so I'm going to turn this upside down and then I'm going to pop this on there. I might have to have something underneath just to give it a bit of height. Yep, okay, so I've got my glue gun already heating up. I've had to steal this back from my daughter. Right, let's add our glue along here. Try and get them as straight as possible and then the next one we put on, just try and line it up as best as you can. That should stick very quickly. So there is our little sleigh with a gift box on the top. That's really cute. I love that. There we go. Oh, Teresa's cat wanted the mince pie. Right, so we're gonna glue this one on. So let's use this glue. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this on. I'm gonna use that in a bit. Thank you, Karen. I love poncettias, so I'm super happy to have these dies. I would love to bring the large ones back too, because those were super size. Okay, let's pop that on top. And again, the cutting and scoring guide for this is down below, but I just need to update the lid. 
it's 3 and 1 16th, which is a smidge under 1 8th. Oops, that's moving. Right, so let's get these put on. Oh, that's sloping. We can fix that later. We can always take that one off, put another one on. I'm just going to add some glue all over like that. There we go, and we're going to put our poncetia on the top. And if there's room, you can also add a sentiment as well. There we go. Now, I think this would look really good with the Holly Jolly papers um, that I've just used as well. Because my candy cane's red is more of a pinky red. So I think that would look great with the Holly Jolly papers. And that is our little Santa sleigh. There we go. How cute is that? Right, I'll be taking pictures of these and sharing them on um, Facebook later on and I'll, I'll pop, up, pop them in the communities tab as well because you can add photos there now as well so I'll pop those on there so let's move that aside right now for our next project I promised a Christmas pavilion with the witch's hat so that is what we're going to get So I've done some die cutting already, so with this witch's hat we get these lovely long pieces here. So the only dies that I'm using are the two big circles and this long die here. Now this die also comes with the stars and a mat as well so you can really go to town with that and if you wanted to make it a Santa hat you can just uh, it's got that belt buckle as well so it's a really nice little feature there so let's pop all of those back in and I've cut 10 of these big ones five of each color so five red and five green and I've also cut some extra pieces to make the trim for the pavilion which is this piece here so we'll get to that piece in a moment so I've got a red base and a red li uh, green liner using those circle dies this is my trim we'll get to that in a moment and then we'll finish off putting these together so these are my sheets that I thought I'd save and show you guys I've got five from the red and five from the green And I've got eight of those already glued together, so let's carry on and add, our, add the rest. And I'm leaving these on as well, that's going to help us attach our trim. So I'm just going to add glue just to these tabs, join them together, and I'm going to try and do as closely as possible these tips there. So I'm alternating them. This would also look good with a white base, and if you die cut, the mats from different colours as well, you can do that too. Press that down. Just add our last one now. Karen's excited about this one. At the end, right at the end, let me know which project was your favourite. It really does help me help, you know, to decide what to make for future demonstrations as well. Okay, so we now have this pavilion and this uh, goes all the way around and we glue that in place and we have this lovely cone. It's like a it's like an elf's hat really. You can make an elf's hat from this as well. So many ideas. But Eta, I challenge you to make one more project. Totally wacky. I would love to see what you make. 
I know you've done loads of completely out of the box for this one but I do really love to see what you come up with okay let's pop this together sometimes it's easier just to pop this down on the table and push down from that side as long as it stays in the right place just keep double checking yes that's okay I can't even tell which one it is now because they're all the same <clears throat> Okay, so we now have this cone, very Christmassy coney cone. Okay, so we now have our trim. This is going to be a very, this is going to be a very tall thing. So I'm going to have to be working on this sideways so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got ten of these, so five of each colour. Got these all glued together already. So this measures two and a quarter by three quarters of an inch and we're going to score this at one and three quarters so let's get our very very big large scoreboard out for this tiny little piece score at one and three quarters we're going to taper this Just like that so that little tab there now has a taper either side and then we're going to glue this onto there and if there's time I would like to add some pom-pom trim as well I'm sure we'd have we have time for this um, I was quite prepared this 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 takes the longest making that cone and I did that already so we should have time and this is going to make an absolutely gorgeous centerpiece as well okay so this is going to be glued now onto the trim you can match the colors up like so or you can alternate them I'm not sure I think I'm going to match because I like to match things so I'm just going to add glue now to a few of these tabs at a time and work our way around so I think this would make a lovely Sunday afternoon project when's it when's stir up Sunday can someone let me know in the comments I actually plan to take <clears throat> to take part this year I just want to make a Christmas cake I think so I've got all the ingredients I just haven't looked up when stir up Sunday is. Is it the last Sunday in November? I'm sure one of you will know. Now this can get quite fiddly. Now this is where I like to demonstrate live here on my own channel because when I'm creating craft you only get like 10 minutes and you really have to skip stages so it's great to be able to take my time here it's less embarrassing as well if something goes wrong or oh. less pressure I think Okay, last few sides. Alternatively, you can glue these on one piece at a time as well, instead of making a really long strip. to this little tab 
And that's it. Tuck that in. Okay, so it's quite important this this trim being on there because it's going to help create a place for us to pop our straws because those are going to be our little stands to hold this thing up in place. So we now have this trim all the way around. Pop that aside. Right, let's get this done because we're going to be moving over to the hot glue in a moment. So let's make our layers. And again, what would you pop inside here? Um, you'll, you'll see the space once I've got everything together. I was thinking um, one of these bottle brush trees with some lights on, I think that would be great. Okay, this should now go over there. It should be just the right size. There we go. Right, decision time. How many straws should we use? We could, could uh, put, I don't really want to put one in each one because that would create a cage and we wouldn't be able to kind of put our goodies in. So I, uh, I think I'm gonna put four in. So I'm just gonna, I don't know whether you'll be able to see, I'm hoping you will. Just gonna add our hot glue there and then pop our straw in. So where should we put the next one? Here. We could get away with three. Yep, yeah, I'm going to do four, but I'm gonna do a gap of two here, a gap of three, top and bottom, and then a gap of two at the side. So a gap of three at the bottom. Can you believe this was a witch's hat? It's amazing. Okay, and then a gap of two. And then a gap of... Uh, a gap of three. Did I not count this right? No, nope, I didn't, but it was fine. No, I did. I'm going mad. There we go. I can count, but I can't count, if that makes sense. <laughs> there we go. And now we have this, this weird looking thing on legs. You can also trim these down if you think that they're going to be too long, but I kind of wanted just that tallness and the space to put a tree in there as well. So uh, I am going to have to have this stood up now, so you'll be seeing some of it a bit in a peculiar position. So we're going to pop that straight onto, see if I turn it to the other side, we're going to be gluing them in place onto our circle. So I'm going to put everything in place first then I'm going to add the glue nice big dollop and it will probably want to move about until the glue has settled okay I've actually got one straw that's gone a bit shorter now that was probably my mistake pushing it up a little bit too far because I'm sure all of these uh, were the same length so that doesn't want to stick down hold those in place we can add extra glue just to build that up if it does need that extra height just holding that in place now it wants to move so hurry up and dry hurry up and dry all the other three are dry so we're just gonna wait for this one to cool down so 
Thank you, Sam. I've only made one of these before. This was, I've, I've made it once for one of the magazines. It was a much smaller version. Okay, I think, well, it still wants to move, but I am gonna risk turning it on its side now so you can see. There we go, this pavilion is coming together nicely. There we go. Look at that, I'm gonna to have to take a photograph with it all standing up so that you can actually see properly. That wants to come off again. You stay right there. Right, I'm just gonna grab another tree. I keep a stash behind my computer monitor. I've got Christmas trees coming out of my ears and I never put them away either. Because I'm crafting pretty much all year round for Christmas, um, whether it's concept stage or <clears throat> sample stage, Christmas in July stage, Christmas stage, I've got Christmas trees. Right, okay. Oh, I've got a handy tip for you actually. How to store bottled brush trees without all of these getting squashed. This is how I store them when I pop them up in the loft as well. I've got more of these in the loft. I've got a massive box of these. I've got these everywhere. So basically, they slot together like this. And if you store them like this, they're not going to get all bent. It's going to protect the bristles and you won't get gaps because once you get a gap, it's horrendous. Uh, it's basically an impossible job in getting everything back straight again. You can't do it. So yeah, it's best just to protect them. Okay, so I've got this tree. I could put a set of three in here. That would be really nice. And you can add some Christmas lights as well. Let's see if I can do this sideways and defy gravity so that you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's see what this looks like with the tree in. There we go. It's going to look like that with the tree in. And you can add some um, wire lights. I'll hold that one in place. Here's another tree. You can put three in there. Isn't that going to look great? I'll pop it in a little turntable and you can add all sorts in here. You can even just put cakes in here as well. There's loads of different things. But I'm not done. I just want to add some pom-pom trim now. So this is my my favourite thing. I bought a massive long line of this pom-pom trim and we're going to pop this along here just to give that a finishing touch. If you have this in different colours or gold or even if you're making a non-Christmas version, you can make a lovely festival version of this as well. So I'm just going to add glue just to two sides at a time. Again, I really can't believe this used to be a witch's hat. But when I did design this, I did have in mind the fact that you could make these canopies with those sections. So I am challenging myself. I said this at the beginning. I'm challenging myself to redo the Simply Made Crafts die sets and projects into Christmas versions. So if you have any suggestions, I'm taking the challenge. So let me know in the comments below what die set you would like to see have a festive makeover. It has to be in stock though because otherwise that is teasing. Pop that on. Dingleberries. <laughs> I'm going to have to go through all of these comments because you're all chatting amongst yourselves and I will have to catch up. Yes, so trees can imagine a Christmas scene staged under here. Yep. So many different things that you can do. Okay, just two more. And I'm not actually going to glue anything into the bottom of this because I kind of want to be able to change the scene 
every Christmas. So for this Christmas I'm going to pop in those three trees with some wire lights and then next Christmas I can get adventurous again and switch it out for something else. Just trim that off, there we go. So let's have a quick look again with the Christmas trees. Put that back under my table. This is way too big for the camera. There we go, we'll go sideways again. There we go. I don't even know how big this is. Let's measure it. See how tall this is. It's round about 17 inches. Wow. Now that's a tall project. Sitting amongst some faux snow and other village scenes around. This would just, yeah, be the pinnacle really. Right, so let's pop in our trees again. What else could we put in here? Let me know in the comments what you would pop in here. So here we have the trees again with the pom-pom trim this time. We even have, I think, craft stash, yeah, they should still be in stock. These little um, light bulbs from Do Crafts. There we go. I use these with the, the house lantern. These little lights are lovely. Let me just grab them. I've got my Christmas tray here. My Christmas box. There we go. I've got all sorts. I've got jingle bells and numbers and pom-poms. I've got all sorts. Okay, so here are the lights. They're not, oops, they're not real lights. They're kind of like you can use them in dolls' houses and things like that. These are lovely. I love these. So I could wrap this around the tree and pop them inside the pavilion. Again, you can make your own signpost for the pavilion as well. And really go to town. Add wreaths and things like I've done here. So let's try and grab all of our projects together so everything that i've used today is stuck to my jumper uh, down below don't forget the 60 percent off ends today at midnight so 11:59. i'm gonna have to put that sideways just to fit it on there and um if you've seen the craft stash tutorial i made at the beginning of the week this is the hot chocolate mug it's got marshmallows in there, it's got hot chocolate and there's two gift boxes at the bottom for you to pop some more chocolates in as well. So really stuff that full. It's full of um, hot chocolate there as well. That is the gift, uh, the mug wrap and gift boxes. So this is the project today. The scoring and cutting guide is down below. This is on my channel already, how to make that. And don't forget, you've got your 60% off. Pop that there. It looks so strange sideways. And then here are the little crackers that we made as well. So I've had a lot of fun today. And I would love to go live more often as well. So I'm hoping to get into that regular habit now that um, my son is now settled at school. It's taken him over a year uh, for things to settle down. Um, hopefully, well, he broke his wrist. <laughs> It's never ending with him. Um, he broke his wrist, so the cast that's up to his shoulder should come off on Friday. So we're super excited about that. So if the x-rays are okay, then that comes off. And then he's just the way back at school until something else happens, I guess. But I'm now settled. He's settled and I can now carry on with my daytime things day to day. So um, I hope you really enjoy everything that I've shown you and made today. Bottle brush trees are lovely. You can get them on Amazon. Loads of different prices. But best buy them in the summer because they're a little bit cheaper in the summer. So stock up for that sort of thing. Out of season, definitely. So um, yeah. So everything that I've used today is listed down below. There's a link that will take you straight to the 60% off uh, SMC. And don't forget, Textures also has 60% uh, off too. And that ends at 11.59 tonight. So we're both ending tonight. And don't forget to tune in at 2 p.m., 
for Sam's Live. I have no idea what she's going to be making. I'm sure it's going to be lovely, but I'll be able to watch for around about an hour before my house fills up and it gets busy again. Okay, so thank you all so much for joining me today. You can subscribe by clicking the icon down in the corner that will subscribe you because I've got loads more um, projects coming and the SMC channel as well. There'll be loads more coming up on there and don't forget to give me your suggestions too. Okay, so thank you so much and I'll see you all again soon.